This is Giuliano Lima. He makes shoes from old tires. He lives in Barcelona, where pretty much everything in his life is recycled. Welcome to our Caboclo house. This is our sofa. We take recycling tires. This, you can see, it's a recycling tire stripe. You see? This is the scaffolding. And that's the tires of recycling tires also. You see, like, this is the scaffold, and this is the bracelet that they used to make together with another big piece of scaffold. So, Basically is that, scaffolding, recycling tires, and we went to the Audi factory and asked them to give us the, the rest, the leather from Audi factory. This is more than 12 years, right guys? And check it out, it's still very good. This, it's super simple, it's recycled, it's practical, you know, I can go around, and it's basic, a pallet. All this pallet you find in the street, like, oh, it's everybody find pallets. I'm happy, I don't know why they're still throwing away. Man, you just can put some nice color. You can put some wheels. And that's it. You have a really nice, you know, middle table for your sitting room. It's easy, fast, cheap. And here is my home office. Da -da 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 -da. As you can imagine, of course, I have a hammock. And here it is where I do all the internet work for and this is from the streets this is from the streets this I made myself in Brazil this is a recycling shelf and my little library here this is the history about shoes and this is like 12, 15 before Christ and what a beautiful amazing sandal this could be a Pau Caboclo nowadays. The Industrial Revolution teaches like beauty is a brand that says, okay, you Prada, you this, or you Louis Vuitton. So I really love to rescue this ancient technique and even this Asian design. You know, like this Asian type of beauty. Giuliano likes to recycle in all areas of his life. His store is an old bakery. So as you can see, all this ceiling, it's original. This is more than 200 years old. And the treads of his shoes have their own history. All the soles from Caboclo is recycling tires. Here you can see the Pirelli guy, all right? It's very raw. We just cut the tire and use as as this, okay? Well, this is shoe 10. All right, you see the colors of the brown. I'm going to show you another shoe tan in brown. And you're going to see even so with shoe tan brown, it's little different because it's never the same. I don't believe in industrial, okay? This is the same model, the same color. It's never the same. Each Caboclo pair will be unique. And of course, this is was made probably by one artisan and this is made by another artisan. We have probably more than 30 people living from this project. And this for me, it's, it's something that I feel good about it. To really tell the story of these shoes, you have to travel 5,000 miles from Barcelona to a remote part of Brazil. All this amazing green carpet was the Cariri tribe. They are native here. They, they live in this land for thousands of, of years. All this green we see now belongs to the Cariri tribe in the past. 
And when Frei Carlos arrived from Portugal in the 18th century, the Kareri tribe disappeared and Crato was found in the 1800th century, okay? Afterwards, nowadays you find no Kariri people over here and there is a legend in town quite interesting that says if once a big rock fall from this mountain, all Crato will be flooded and the Kariri people will come back. We are Brazilian, we love nature. For us, nature is our biggest asset. So, working with recyclable materials was always a must. Eu sou Raul Lampião do Crato. Morar no Crato é uma benção de Deus. This is where everything starts. As you can see, there is loads of dead tires over here. We make the research. We realize and actually making shoes with tires is quite common in the past in South America. So we are like, wow, what a great idea. Why not only use recycling tires for our shoes? Especially Brazil, we have more than 80 million vehicles. Imagine how much tires we make every year and this is even so brazil is quite good to making recycling tires there is a lot of at least 20 percent of them that they just throw it away and it's a terrible problem because in tires you can find some disease you know the mosquito of dengue and mosquitoes they love the empty the stuck water and usually they grow up into the tires this was all supposed to go to the trash, but it will become a sandal afterwards, okay? All these tires you see is gonna be sandals. So that makes it really glad. We, we're giving new life to these tires, and this is very important. It's a pleasure to be here with Sr. Zeca, the person who is responsible for buscar the pneus in the prefecture and do a work of recycling. Quantos anos o senhor está fazendo esse trabalho? 40. 40 anos. 40 anos. Já pegaram de frente, ó. Sola de sapato reciclado, aí tem que ser sobre pneu, sabe? The recycling tire work. For us, we have this guy that is Mr. Zeca that he have been doing this work for the last 50 years. Here we have two generations of recycling tires people. We are very thankful to them work. And now his kid is also doing this work. I love them because they not only work for Caboclo, but they make several things with tires. I don't know, they can make a bed of tires if you want. In Brazil, it's a rich country, but full of poor people. For me, it was really important to work with people that didn't have all the opportunities they should have in life. Five o'clock in the morning, we are just leaving Crato to go to Petrolina, our new ladder provider. It's five hours driving. I want to show you this. This is Mandacaru. It's the very typical plant from here, from this region. And all this region is Kariri. Okay? That rain, the rain that was far away, now we are deep inside the rain. That's very typical in Brazil. Start to rain super, super strong, and after five minutes, the sun is shining again. 
but it's very beautiful. And the smell is very nice. Brazil, it's a very large country, it's like a continent. The north is a way more poor than the south. So for us, working in the north was always a must. Chegando, we nearly there. We finally arrived here at Curtume Moderno. This is our new partner. They make the natural tanned leather for us. And just to make it very clear, a lot of people say, why are you still working with leather? The deal is, the industry of leather, it's a sub-product of the industry of meat. So as long as we're still eating meat, it's very good to use, to use the leather. This is the first part of the leather process. After the industry of meat, take out the meat of the cow. Here we have all the leather in the most, most raw materials, okay? This is when everything starts. In the beginning, there is only salt in the leather. We just use natural analysis to make the leather. We don't use chrome or any kind of metal or any kind of chemicals. To make the leather in the industrial way, it's very bad. It's full of chemicals, okay? But the bad guy, the ugly guy is chrome. Chrome is a metal, very strong. That's why the leather have a very bad reputation. For example, these jackets, I sell these jackets because this is recycled leather. You see this leather that looks all the same and it's soft since the very beginning? This is industrial leather. Industrial leather, what's happening? The whole piece of leather stays in a swimming pool full of chemical things, including chrome. Chrome is terrible for your health and could even give you cancer. So that's why there is a big problem with the leather tannery. Because you can work industrial or you can work natural. Industrial leather, they look all the same, all right? And it's soft since the very beginning. It stays three days inside a swimming pool. And afterwards, they can be dry and they can be used as leather as well. Natural tanned leather, you always see the mark of the cow. That's why we call natural. If the, if the cow damaged herself, you will see this on the leather. And this, the whole piece of leather stays 24 days inside the swimming pool, but only full of natural stuff. Okay, so the process of the tannery, when it's natural, we still have in the swimming pool, it have to be 24 days. At least the materials you put in the swimming pool are natural anilines, okay? And this is very important to know, okay? We only use natural anilines or vegetable anilines. Okay, to work the ladder. It's true that the leather tannery is horrible because they use strong metals, they use chrome. So all the water of this process afterwards is a huge equal problem. Our suppliers of natural tanned leather, they only use vegetable anilines to tan the leather. But also, afterwards, they are obligated to clean the water. We only work with leather providers that afterwards, the water they use, they have to give back to the nature as clean as they take it. Ela está tratada biologicamente e daí ela é lançada de novo no rio, no rio de volta para o rio. Tá? We can speak a little bit about how we produce this shoe. So the first thing we need to recycle the tire, the tire here, okay? We get the whole piece of tire and there is a machine that cut the tire in this format for us. We keep the process as handmade as we can. We only cut the tires with the machine. And we have some machines, but it's not electric machines. We 
know, it's machines that work with pedals. We rely on our hands and our culture. It, it's something very important. If you want something, you can easily do with your hands if you feel like it. When we make the research to create a product, we realize these people in Cariri, in Brazil, in the very north, that they have this rude technique to make products from leather. Cariri have a very, very, very beautiful, specific leather culture that is more than 200 years now. Francisco, he's 70. He has been working with us for the last 14 years. He was used to make very simple sandals and sell these sandals in a square. Quantos anos o senhor faz sapato? Acho que há uns 50, mais ou menos, aproximadamente. E aí, com quem o senhor aprendeu esse ofício? Com meu pai. Ao seu pai já era sapateiro também. So when I met him, he's like, he's Pablo Picasso of leather. He's one of the most talented people I saw working, you know, he's, he's amazing. And luckily, he was always open to teach new generations together. natural leather it's also a bit hard in the beginning it's impossible to have natural leather that it's super soft and all the same and in my opinion I think it's quite interesting because every shoe is unique you can see like here you see these lines mm -hmm. yeah. this is not a fault of the shoe this is because the, the cow damaged herself and you can see that in the shoe afterwards imperfections make things more perfect just like something unique, like yourself. I've been wearing a pair of Giuliano shoes for the past decade, and he insists his shoes are supposed to be better with age. He believes in slow fashion. This is how the, the, the shoe is in the beginning, right? Here we go. This is the same shoe after five years. And I really think like this is the proof that the leather is alive. Check how changed the shoe. Changed a lot. And of course, became very flexible afterwards. Very flexible. The leather is hard. It's losing a little bit the color. Some people could paint it, but I, I think it's so much nicer like this. Different, huh? It loses a little bit the black color. You can even paint it again. But we don't like it. We like it like, you know, to, to still have your your old time showing that you eat an old shoe. And it's also very important to relate the design of the shoes with the craft people in Brazil. I can't get crazy and design like a Lady Gaga shoes and afterwards the craft people say, hey Juliano, this is impossible. And also I never use like zipper, we don't use industry hard machines. So the design is a bit, little bit limited by the techniques we have. But also somehow this limitation make us create new techniques from craft. So actually the limitation actually was a good thing at the end. As we don't want to use industrial machinery, we have this amazing way to fix it all the pieces. Caboclo shoes, we barely never use uh, stitching. Here, the only stitching you have is the one that making the leaning inside. <laughs> what I'm really trying to do with Caboclo is create this round economy, you know, like between the people that making the tires, people that sell the leather, the artisans. 
some of the, uh, the artisans, they're, they're like, they even don't know how to write. You know, like they are like Picasso of leather, but you know, the painting, they, they never have the, the, the chance to so study. I get with the Picasso of leather, you know, and they should have money for being Picasso of leather. Check this caboclo delivery, please. This is our main guy, Francisco. He's just bringing all our caboclo production for the next week. More money I sent to this place and more round economy I create in this place, it's great. All the shoes, we give you a handmade bag, okay? And these handmade bags are also made in Crato by a family, well, actually it's a mother and a daughter and they, they have a little cooperative and all the bags are made there. The, the, the material we also buy over there. So as I said, we, 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 we create this little round economy between Caboclo and trying to spread to divide more richness. That is actually for me is the most important thing. I'm very proud of, we are doing shoes in Crato, in the Sertão of Brazil, one of the poorest areas, and selling in Japan. And this same product, this, like we create a language, we create a patron, we giving work to nice people in Brazil. We, we keeping and fomenting craft culture. Uh, I really would love to have bigger scale and have more artisans working for us. But once again, this is not a mainstream product. No, this is something unique, one by one. You have to recycle the tile. You have to make natural tanned leather. So this is low scale. And I think slow is beautiful. You know, slow is unique. 